Hi again. Um, this time I've got uh, this coffee pot. It's our, our everyday use coffee pot. We've, we've used a percolator for a lot of years, but we just had a new baby and uh, she requires a lot of attention and more, more attention than we can give to uh, the percolator right now. So it tends to boil over and make a big mess. This thing, however, I, uh, I found in, in the trash one day and don't judge. Uh, I rescued it. It works fine. We cleaned it up and, and put it into everyday service. But it's a, it's a basic model. It doesn't have uh, a clock and, and programmable functions and all. All it is is a, just a plain on-off switch. And uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't shut itself off. I, I would have thought it'd have a, a, a little safety timer to, to shut the burner off after a couple hours. Um, but, but no, it doesn't. It's, it, it just runs and runs and runs all day long. Uh, and it's consuming 900 watts, 120 volt, 120 volts, 900 watts, seven and a half amps all day long so uh, much as I I appreciate how simple it is I really wanted to turn itself off um, after a few hours so let's take it apart and see if we can put a timer circuit in it to turn it off hmm. had these little tamper resistant screws in these top two holes here. It's really annoying. It's almost as if they don't ever want you to take it apart. And there's the inside of it. It's got the uh, heating element and looks like uh, thermal fuse in there to shut it off. Well, it just shuts it off when it reaches a certain temperature then resets and lets it heat back up to keep the, the hot plate at a certain temperature. And it looks like the hot water cycles through here. Well, the water cycles through here to get hot and then back up. And there's our power switch. Three wires on it. It's got a it's got a little green light in it. Must be a neon. I was hoping it was an LED and there'd be some DC in here that we could get hold of for this project. But no, we'll uh, we'll have to put in a little regulated DC supply to make our timer circuit work. So how are we going to do this? There's lots of room in the cavity of that thing, um, but we need some kind of DC voltage to run our circuit. Uh, I've got one of these just laying around in my junk box. It's uh, just a wall wart transformer generic thing. I don't know what it came from, but it's rated at 9 volts DC, uh, 150 milliamps, and without a load on it, just, just measured straight out of the thing, it, it actually measures 13 volts, which sounds like uh, ideal for what I have in mind. So we need that. Well, I'll just knock this thing apart, take the guts out of it, and, uh, and wire it in to power my circuit. So that's good. Um, the timer itself, there's a couple ways we could go. Um, Today, microcontrollers are, are so inexpensive and getting easier to work with all the time. It, it, it might be the first thing you go to. Just uh, stick a microcontroller in there, uh, wire it up to a transistor to switch a relay on and off, uh, and then and write a program to do it. Count down a few hours, turn the relay off, done. But uh, we need to drive that relay with... 12 volts, let's say. I have a 12 volt relay here in my junk box that I'll use. Uh, 12 volt coil. Uh, so we need 12 volts for the relay and if we used a microcontroller we'd need 
a 3.3 volt or maybe a 5 volt regulated supply as well. Um, and, and then wire the whole thing dead bug style or etch a circuit board for it. Um, eh, nah, that sounds like a pain. Uh, another way we could go is a 555 timer uh, IC, another 8 pin, little 8 pin IC. Mm, a few, you know, a couple of resistors, a capacitor and our transistor to drive our relay that thing could run on 12 volts though they're they're good up to up to 15 volts i think um so we'd, we would eliminate one of our the, the need for one of those regulated power rails but i think i think we can simplify this thing even further with just an rc timer circuit no ic's at all and just wire the thing whole uh, point to point in there so we're talking about uh a relay, a resistor, one capacitor, and one transistor to drive this relay. Here's what that would look like. Just that. So I've got the relay in my junk box. It's a 845HN uh, that I pulled out of some piece of gear. Uh, across that the coil of that relay we'll put a diode a 1 in 4148 and this uh, this transistor here this is a Darlington transistor it's actually one one contained unit drawn like this uh, but it's a BC 517 is what I've got on hand here so we know what those parts are going to be uh, now we just need to figure out what the values of this capacitor and this resistor here are going to be. Uh, so what's going to happen is, let's say this is a switch uh, that you, you would push to start the thing. This capacitor gets charged up and uh, when you release the switch that, uh, that stored energy in that capacitor is going to want to go through this resistor and into the through the base of this transistor pair through the emitters and to ground. That turns this transistor on, which lets current flow through this relay coil, clicks the relay on, and activates whatever that relay uh, is connected to, in this case, the, the, the hot plate. So um, the magic happens when this energy stored in this capacitor bleeding off through this resistor, through that transistor, uh, what we need to figure out is what values to choose here uh, will give us adequate amount of time to get our, our coffee consumed before the thing depletes this capacitor and shuts the hot plate off. So with that simple circuit, all we have to do is uh, figure out the value of this resistor and this capacitor such that it'll keep this transistor switched on for however many hours we want to run that thing. I'm going to shoot for three and a half or four hours before it shuts that hot plate off. So there's a formula that you can do that with. It's, uh, it's called the RC time constant and it is time in seconds equals R times C. All right, so if you just start choosing values for R and C, let's let's pick some pretty small values to start with. Uh, 330 K times uh, point, let's make it 40, 47 microfarads. All right, so 330,000 ohms and 47 microfarad capacitor. That is 15.5 seconds. So in 15.5 seconds with these values it's called the, the it's called the time constant RC 
and after 15.5 seconds this capacitor will have bled out through this resistor until the voltage contained in this capacitor, the voltage remaining in this capacitor is around 36-37% of, uh, of what we started at and let's say we start at our 13 Point one volts, uh, and we're going to the 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 real the real formula for figuring that is uh, voltage times one over e, the constant e, which comes out somewhere around thirty six, thirty six and a half uh, percent. So thirteen point one divided by, no, excuse me, 13.1 times point three, let's say 365 equals 4.78. 4.78 volts is the, uh, the voltage that's going to be left in this capacitor after it is discharged through this resistor for 15.5 seconds. Okay, that is that is one time constant. And uh, so here's here's the trouble with with this. Uh, the discharge rate of this capacitor through a resistor of any capacitor through a resistor like this isn't linear. It, it has a curve, has a curve like this. Here's a graph. This is voltage up this side. This is time down here. It starts out strong and a steep decline and then it starts to curve out and discharges more and more slowly over time. So with that wacky nonlinear curve, you can't just say, oh, it's going to be this many time constants. Um, what you've, you, you, there's, there's calculus involved to solve this problem, and then you could determine exactly how long it would take to discharge down to a particular voltage. <clears throat> but we can get close enough. Uh, we know that, uh, V times 1E in our case is 4.78 volts. Um, so we can we can breadboard this thing with these these values, and we can just test it. And let's let's use a stopwatch and see how long it takes to get down to 4.78 volts from 13.1, and uh, just mark that time down. That's that's one RC, the, the time constant, okay? Then we can just observe with our stopwatch how long it takes. Let's say this is one RC right here. That's in, in the case of our numbers below 4.78 volts. Let's see how long it takes to bleed off. We can measure, you know, we can keep monitoring that voltage and see how long it takes to bleed off and finally cut that transistor off. When the transistor turns off, we're done. Uh, so let's breadboard it and just do some timing uh, to avoid doing calculus to figure this this curve out. <clears throat> I'll tell you what else. Since we're uh, since we're designing this thing to do exactly what we want it to do, I don't want a switch or a push button or anything right here to to start this. Hello, cat. To start this. Uh, this timer circuit. Uh, right, you know, the way I've got it drawn here, it requires manual intervention. So you turn the coffee pot on and then you've got to press this switch or uh, press a button or something, a momentary switch to, to charge that cap and get things started. I don't want that. I want, uh, I want it to just work on its own when you, when you turn the, the coffee pot on. I want it to charge and start discharging immediately. So Instead of this switch here, here's what I came up with. We just replaced 
that switch, the switch was was right there, and there's there's our original idea. So now we're going to replace that switch with a uh, a PNP transistor, uh, a couple resistors to set it up, and uh, another capacitor. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to repeat the same thing twice over here. We're going to uh, set up this capacitor so it charges through uh, this uh, resistor transistor combination. Uh, we're doing. I guess we're doing the opposite. This one's going to charge while that one charges up and discharges through a resistor. This one's going to charge up and um, while it's charging, it's it's trying to pull uh, this the the base of this transistor to ground while it charges up, and uh, it, it's only going to be at ground for a minute, and it's going to slowly build up a charge. And all the while, this transistor is going to be switched on. It's going to come the the power supply voltage, the 13 volts that we start with, is going to want to find a path to ground through the uh, emitter of this transistor and through the base which is at a lower potential as long as this thing is trying to charge up when it does that this transistor is going to switch on it's going to conduct through to our main capacitor circuit so that trans that, uh, excuse me that capacitor is going to start charging up while that transistor is on after some amount of time and we have to do our math again, our RC time constant, to figure out what components to put here and here. This uh, 1K resistor and this capacitor here through the transistor to figure out how long it's going to take that to charge up to a level. Uh, oops, let me turn that air off. Sorry about that. There. Uh, we got to keep this transistor switched on long enough to get this capacitor adequately charged uh, to to let it bleed out and keep our timer running for uh, the duration we want. So we got to pick a big enough capacitor, a big enough resistor to delay uh, the shutoff of this transistor. So power on, transistor's on, this charges up, at some point it uh, it will uh, the, the voltage applied to the base here will shut that transistor off. When it does, this one should be adequately charged up. And now that it's not being charged anymore through that transistor, this can start discharging through there and keep our relay switched on, keep the coffee burner going for uh, our, you know, our original time estimate of uh, however many hours we can we can make that work. All right, so let's uh, breadboard this thing with some smaller values. Look at our stopwatch and uh, see what we get. See if this thing's actually going to work. Okay, uh, I'm going to go handheld for this so I can move around and show you what I've got going on here. Uh, here's our, our little circuit we talked about with some small component values um, so we're not here all day uh, checking this or you know we're shooting for a timer that would run for hours but I don't want to test that just to make sure it works and I don't want to wait around that long this will just take a a few seconds so what you're looking at is uh, there's our woo, 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 sorry I'll get the hang of this this is our Darlington transistor. This is our main timing capacitor. Uh, right now it's 47 microfarads. It's going to have to be bigger for the real thing. 330K resistor. Uh, this part of the board here, there's our just PNP switch transistor. The 1K and 100K bias resistors for it. And the, uh, I think it's another 47 uh, microfarad cap uh, to uh, manage the the on off the automatic switching of our main timer okay and I've got alligator clips here for our uh, voltmeter that I'll show you uh, I've got the uh, the wall wart 
Uh, yeah, there's a couple couple of complications here. I've got the wall wart uh, here that I wanted to use to power the thing uh, once we get it installed in there. Here is our relay uh, that I picked out of the junk box. The wall wart uh, is powering our circuit here and the coil for the relay. Uh, but it isn't powerful enough to power the load that I'm using to test, which is this truck brake light right here, a trailer brake light. You'll see more of that thing in upcoming videos, but uh, it's acting as our, our load, uh, representing the coffee burner. I've also got it wired to this relay backwards. It's a, a dual pole, double pole, double throw relay, so I can switch things on or off with it. Uh, for this test, I have chosen to switch off when the circuit is engaged and switch back on when uh, when the timer elapses, so when the time runs out, just as an indicator of what's really going on there. So uh, I've got the, the light wired up to uh, an external power supply that can handle that load because this wall work cannot power that brake light. So. Uh, all wired up. I've got my voltmeter and a stopwatch right here. I think I can get them both in frame along with the light. And what we will see is uh, I'll switch the power on to the brake light. You know, the light comes on. And I will plug in our wall wart. And I will start. I'm using my phone here. Uh, I have a stopwatch there. So what we're looking for is uh, when we hit that first, the end of that first time constant that we got, uh, the, the first critical voltage step around five volts, uh, it's, it's gonna be less uh, because this wall wart doesn't, uh, doesn't provide the full 13 volts uh, that I originally wanted. It's uh, it's only about 10, but it's enough to make this thing work. So the timing is going to be uh, different than, uh, than what we had on paper, but let's just see what happens. I'm going to plug this in, and what you're going to see is that light go out, and our voltage on the voltmeter up there is going to start climbing, and then it's going to start pulling back. There it is. Let's start our timer. You can see it shot up to almost 12 volts and then immediately started coming back down. And when we get to 5 volts, I'm going to lap our timer. There we go. Something like that. I think I missed it by a lot, but... It was around... It was around 12 seconds when I hit it. I think I hit it early, but yeah, around 15 seconds, which is what we figured. And it'll just keep going and going and going. And what we're going to do is uh, time how long it takes for that light to come back on. And at the rate it's going, it'll be pretty quick. It's got to get... The, we're, what we're looking for is the, uh, the voltage across this capacitor has to drop down below the threshold at which it can still... Uh, maintain this Darlington transistor. Once it uh, falls below that, it can't keep that transistor switched on anymore and the relay will turn off and our light will come back on because remember I've got the light wired in backwards. Uh, okay, 1.2. It doesn't have far, much farther to go. We're at a minute 25. Uh huh. Okay. Stop. Or stopwatch there. A minute thirty. Let me call it a minute thirty-two or so. Um. So that's what would happen. The and remember the the light being on represents the hot plate turning off when I when I wire it in. That's what we get. So uh, small values in the in the circuit right now for testing, but that's gonna work. We saw the thing power up, charge up the capacitor, our switching transistor cut off, and then the capacitor started discharging and kept the relay engaged until it couldn't anymore. So now, let's look at our timing numbers here, what we came up with, and uh, 
see if we can pick out some bigger components, some some larger value components to keep that thing on for uh, a couple hours. Okay, based on that experiment and uh, what we recorded with the stopwatch, this uh, these are the numbers we ended up with at uh, twelve point two seven seconds. We hit our our five volt threshold. I'm actually wrong about that figure. It's it's not five volts. I'll get to that in a second. And after a minute thirty four ninety four seconds, it shut the uh, the relay off. So um, if we refigure uh, all of our the numbers that we should have started with, our RC constant is fifteen point five one seconds based on uh, a Let's see, 47 microfarad cap and a 330K resistor for test. 15.51 uh, seconds is how long it should take to get down to uh, our RC time constant uh, voltage level of 4.4 .4 volts, not 5, because now we're at 12 volts instead of 13 where we were before. So 4.4 one four volts should take 15 and a half seconds to discharge down to that from 12 volts with those two components. So um, let's go with those numbers. Uh, what what I recorded with stopwatch was actually 12.27 seconds. I was shooting for five volts, and I think I might have even hit the button a little early. But that's you know that's that's close. I, I think this I think the math works. Um, so you need calculus uh, to uh, really figure out the nonlinear curve that is this rate of discharge to figure out what, you know, once you have RC to figure out what two times RC and three times RC and so on. So we figure out what your voltage would actually be at those points. Uh, you're into differential equations, and I'm yeah, I can't be bothered. So uh, I don't know if this will work. It certainly won't be as accurate as uh, the actual solution, but yeah, it's a coffee pot. It's going to get me close enough. Um, I figure 94 seconds, which is what what our shutoff time was up here. 94 seconds divided by 15.51. Uh, is 606 so let's call that 6 RC 6 six time constants to get to our shutoff time okay the relay clicks off after 6 counts of our RC time constant um, if we want to go for 4 hours that's 1400 or excuse me 14,400 seconds 14,400 divided by 6 is 2,400 seconds. So that's our new RC time constant. 2,400 seconds of 40 minutes. 40 minutes, yeah. So after uh, we would take 2,400 and we know we need a bigger capacitor and a bigger resistor to slow this thing down. So I'm going to pick practical a practical value for one or the other. I'm going to start with a capacitor say a thousand microfarads uh, 2400 seconds divided by a thousand microfarads uh, is two two million four hundred thousand ohms so if I pick that size capacitor that size resistor I should see my RC uh, uh, I should reach my RC level of 4.14 volts uh, at the 2400 second mark. So I'll put a 1000 microfarad capacitor in there and I'll just do like uh, oh I know I'll get uh, I'll get two 1 meg resistors in series with the 330k that we started with and that'll get us pretty close to that. And uh, I won't film the timing of that because that's 40 minutes to even get to the first level and then six times that four out you know you get the idea and uh we'll see how close we get and build this thing up just wanted to show you 
you know, we just passed the 4.41 threshold at around 33 minutes. So it's it's a little quicker than the 40 minutes we figured for our RC time constant. Probably, um, well, it could be just component variance. My uh, my resistor network there uh, is about 10,000 ohms shy of what the math said to use, and uh, this uh, this meter of course hooked up across that capacitor is is helping the capacitor to discharge more quickly it's it's going to be 10 another 10 mega ohms uh, across that capacitor so it's going to discharge a little faster but not not too bad a, a variable there i'm gonna i'm gonna live with that and we'll see what it does and there it is i uh just used a piece of perf board I had laying around. There's my relay and all my components. There's the main capacitor, uh, switch transistor, Darlington back there under that yellow wire, and all of my resistors. This is the capacitor for the switch transistor that turns it on when you plug the whole thing in. This is the insides of that wall wart adapter. Uh, I just I just wired it in and you know broke it out of its case. Just wired it into the board and uh, strapped it down. Um, probably going to cut these plug ins off or solder to them and heat shrink them. I, I haven't decided yet, but now I got to figure out how to get it into the coffee maker and. Uh, wire it all in, secure it in there somehow so it's not bouncing around, make it safe. And here we are, success. Um, got the two wires I need uh, going up here, let me back up here. This red wire uh, used to be on this uh, center terminal of this switch, right? and the switch just provided uh, power to that red wire that turned on the burner. So all I did is bring that red wire over here to my one of my relay contacts and uh, the other one back up to where the switch is. So the switch now provides power to my relay contacts and I'll complete that circuit up until my uh, my delayed timer elapses and it shuts the burner off. So the front switch will work as usual. Uh, just the, the burner will turn off after a few hours like I wanted. And then the next day, if we just forget about it altogether, all we have to do is turn the burner off, or turn the switch, the front switch off to reset everything, power it back up. It's going to work just like it did before. Now it's just got an auto shut off. So there you go. Um, usual disclaimers apply. This is probably really stupid. Uh, don't try this at home unless you absolutely know what you're doing. And I'm sure the manufacturer of this equipment would in no way condone this behavior. And neither do I for that matter. So don't do it. Don't be like me. Bye.